Hi, good morning. Thank you all for um, being back. My name is Jean Dark with the Department of Public Safety, Public Information Officer for the East Texas area. I'd like to uh, start this press conference off with our uh, Fire Marshal Chuck Allen giving you an uh, update on what has happened in the overnight hours. As of right now, all the unaccounted victims are accounted for. Uh, the last ones were located last night at a uh, down in on the Gulf Coast. They had gone down there for vacation and and uh, didn't realize that they had been reported missing. So uh, they were finally located. The National Weather Service finally confirmed it yesterday afternoon that we did suffer an EF3 uh, tornado with winds in excess of right at 140 miles an hour. The path of the storm was 9.9 .9 miles on the ground, about 700 uh, yards wide. Uh, the tornado first touched down about six miles north of Edom and uh, lifted about one mile southeast of the Pruitt community. I will at this time officially confirm that retired lieutenant from Garland Police Department, David Tapley, and his wife are the ones that lost their life in the storm. Our hearts and prayers go out to that family and to their loved ones and know that they will continue to be in our thoughts and prayers as the days to come. As of 8 o'clock this morning, we have began letting tree service in to start removing a lot of the tree debris to allow more easy access once we allow, get the roll-off dumpsters in place to do the debris uh, removal. We're transferring from a response phase to more of a recovery efforts uh, to begin that process of getting this community back to normal. The city is placing dumpsters in the affected area and what this will do is, is to allow these citizens who've suffered damage to just walk out to the street side, throw their debris in there and not have to worry about trying to get it across town to a to the dump site. Those organizations, volunteer organizations on disasters, your VOADs, those groups that are familiar with and do uh, cleanup will be the organizations we allow in there right now to begin that uh, recovery phase and debris cleanup with these citizens. Our efforts there is to protect any of these citizens from being taken advantage of by other organizations coming in, businesses. Uh, with that, the city has developed a flyer with the Attorney General Office information uh, to protect the rights of these citizens and to prevent from scamming and overcharging of, of services down the road. As of last, last night, Governor Abbott did declare Banzac County a disaster area. Uh, and his, my understanding is has also seeked uh, a disaster declaration from the President of the United States. Last night during the overnight hours, Texas Task Force 2 uh, arrived on scene and did a secondary, uh, more thorough search with uh, cadaver canines and other search rescue canines and uncovered no other uh, victims as a result of this disaster. Uh, the power crews worked diligently through the night. They were able to restore nearly all the power. We have about 5% of the power it has not been restored yet as of about 15 minutes ago. And I believe of that, 25 customers that could accept power are still needing to be restored and that should be restored later today as they can get in there and work. At this time, I'll turn it over to Dean Stone, the mayor of Bam. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Uh, I've been around quite a while in, this, in, in Texas, and we have had a great recovery from this. We've got people that have really stepped up. We've got volunteer organizations. We've got volunteer tree removal, and, and I know that all sounds ridiculous, but it's really helped. We are in much better shape than I ever dreamt we'd be at this time today from yesterday or well actually the night before last when we were out here in the middle of the storm. But I just appreciate everybody. I appreciate the news media. I appreciate all the volunteers. I, I couldn't name them all. I'd have to have a list a mile long. And, and I don't know how you could ever expect to recover without it. Uh, we, we are doing well. We have things if people need, we have need things. We've got water, we've got uh, blankets, we've got food, we've got everything if they need it. So they need to be there. 
come get it. It's in several areas. You come and inquire. We'll take care of it. Make sure you know where it's at. And, and that's important to people that don't have a home today. And, and, and there's several around here right now that don't have a home today. So we're, we're going to keep swinging the bat. And once again, thank you all for being here. And uh, keep an eye on us. We're going to get it put together. Thank you very much. This time we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. So do you know what the, uh, what's the status of the school situation? I know there are several buildings that are damaged. The school was canceled yesterday and today. What's the latest on that? The school district is still evaluating all the options, and I've not talked to them this morning. Uh, we will be getting with them later today. Hopefully, we'll have an answer to that question this afternoon during our three o'clock press conference. Is there anything that happened overnight? We we had a a high presence of law enforcement, and there was no reports of any looting reported to any law enforcement agencies or officers that were here in the area that were assigned to the perimeter control. If, if they reside on that street in that area, law enforcement has been instructed to allow them in. Our, our, our problem is we don't want a whole bunch of citizens down in there. We still have a lot of safety concerns, and as long as those safety concerns are there, it's our utmost responsibility to keep anybody else from getting hurt. You estimate how many power poles, I mean dozens, I'm sure, how, how the number or estimate how much work was achieved overnight? I, I do not know how much was achieved. I just know we were back. We're up to about five percent that has not been restored yet. How long was that for you to know just how much work was accomplished? I know the mayor talked about that. But just to see the outpour of achievement. I've been involved in several disasters. Uh, this one was a greater magnitude than normal, and to see the outpouring of support, uh, all the resources coming together, working together, uh, we were extremely successful in this. I would have never dreamed we would be transitioning from a response to a recovery phase with debris management this quick in this incident. So it's still unclear about just how school for the ISD for the next month will happen? No sir, I do not know. We'll, we'll be getting with them later today and I'll have that answer for you this afternoon. Any cost? I'm actually working on kind of a, an estimated cost. Uh, keep in mind that this di disaster did affect other area county and the disaster declaration covered any flooding damages, wind damage, tornado damage that affected the entire county of Van Zandt. We're looking at several millions of dollars in damages. Any other questions? You had a lot of outpouring of people making sure you had the water things that you need. Is there any need right now that you have that needs to be answered? Pardon? We are, we are establishing another area for, for the donations. Uh, I was on the phone with them and, and I was late <laughs> getting here. So uh, we are working on another location for donations and uh, actual needs, uh, just anything in clothing and blankets because people are out of their, their homes, they're out of their, uh, just their necessities. Anything that's a necessity, uh, we need, okay? So, just so to be clear, did you say clothes and blankets? Yes. Okay. Yes, sure will. Appreciate that. So they gotta have. Well, any other questions? I got one other question about the sirens. Did you get a chance to go back and review the content of the sirens when they sounded as uh, which the timetable was and how many times they sounded? How many times what? The sirens. Did go off? What kind of time before the, the actual tornado hit? Go back and review the. Okay, and we haven't had a chance to go over that all the way, but let me say this, I was in the street right up here, and the sirens went off, uh, I didn't have a watch to look at, but I had ample time, but we were assisting some things that was going on, and, and I will say this, uh, we would like more time, but this storm was a different situation, everybody was watching the big storm. And on TV and everywhere in the country, this little dot until about no time before it blew up. It, it, and they, we saw that on, on the internet and things. So that that was part of it because nobody was really honed in on it like they were the bigger storms. So, but actually, uh, our sirens were very good, and I don't hear very well, that's why I talk loud. But anyhow, they, they were very good. I could hear them fine. 
Uh, the wind was real high already. It was raining until you couldn't see. So that's the situation. And I'm sure that some of them didn't hear it. It's just uh, some of us do that, you know. But uh, we will be reviewing it. We've got another new one going up. Uh, where is it? Right over here. As a matter of fact, just over here a little ways. It's there. They reach out further. Everything. So it will be improved. But uh, for the time that, that we knew of this situation coming toward us to the time we recovered, I think it was pretty sweet. Okay. How many are still hospitalized? Hey, I don't know that answer. Do you know that answer? My understanding, there's still two in critical condition at the local hospitals that are in intensive care unit. Most everybody else has been treated and released from the hospital. My, my understanding is they're, they're still in, in critical condition. Jeff, we're, we're talking about the uh, warning on the sirens, but uh, was, this, was this tornado rain wrapped? As for being rain wrapped, I could not tell you that. To, to elaborate a little more on the, on the time frame, because I know that's been a concern, I was monitoring the National Weather Service chat session. Uh, the, the tornado warning was issued. The sirens were set off, and we still had several minutes of, of notice before we actually had a confirmed touchdown. I was monitoring the county radio channel, heard the, dep heard the city police officer ask, why are the sirens going off? And then it was about two to three minutes later, he gets on the radio and confirms we had a tornado on the ground. He said, where it's at, I can hear it. So we have radio transmissions of, of that conversation. But, but at nighttime in a rain-wrap situation, it's hard for a spotter to get that information so they can be confirmed at that point. It's already that, that is correct. Thank y'all. Okay, we'll be back at 3 o'clock this afternoon for any other updates. Thank y'all.